Now let's talk about why we're really here. It is my great pleasure to try for the next 30 minutes to entice you to think about the question that we post. Is Thai culture good or bad for the development of Thailand's visitors e economy, vis visitors economy or economy visitors? Visitors economy. Complete visitor economy. For Thailand's complete visitor economy. Thank you very much. Let's try and learn these words. Visitor. Complete. Complete. Complete visitor. CVE. CVE. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's talk about CVE and let's look at the Thai culture being good or bad. And this is an open and honest question that we would like you to think about. And I am not going to fret any further. We have two great persons here that are both in their way provoking thoughts of all of us. First of all, we have Kun Voranai here. Kun Voranai, if you just can come up. to join on here already. Kun and I lived for 11 of his young years in Austin, Texas. And if you Google him, you will see a great picture of him in a Warriors football uniform. His teachers or his coach called him the Thailand Tiger. <laughs> And if you read his articles in the Bangkok Post, I think the tiger is still there. So, he has a bachelor degree in politics and history and a master degree in business. He is a political and social commentator from the Bangkok Post. His Sunday morning columns on the one before last page of the Bangkok Post is something I highly recommend to you. And he is a frequent commentator on Thai politics internally and even for the BBC. And he is a lecturer at Tamasat University in the Faculty of Journalism and Mass Media. So I think he is qualified to talk about this question. The other person which I also would like to invite up, and I know he's sitting behind the pillar, which is MTS in full form always very modest in the corner. I don't think I have to say much about him. The only say, thing I say every time I have an opportunity to introduce him, that in 1985 he nearly killed me <laughs> in the press. Because when I came to the Royal Orchid I did a speech in Thai and after his comments in the TTG, I will never ever do that again. <laughs> and he was so right, and our relationship starts from there, and I think we have learned from each other. As you all know, MTS lives in Thailand since 1978, and also worked for the Bangkok Post for a long time. Then worked for Travel Trade Gazette, and did a great job again playing Mr. Adam Tan, the anonymous person that was always making comments. He is writing, or he was writing, a travel monitor column for the Bangkok Post, and he is now focusing very much on his own newsletter, <coughs> Travel Impact Newswire. And I presume that most of you are among his 45,000 people that at least claim to read his newsletters, at least get his newsletters. I don't know how many delete or how many don't delete, but I can only recommend, as I recommended from Kundur and I, read his columns and you will get a lot for food for thought. So, long story short, Kunvor and I, please do us the favor and give us your thoughts about Thailand, good or bad, for the development of the CVE in 
our industry. Is that my cue? Okay, sorry. Um, um, before I start, um, I have to warn everybody, I hope you end up saying at least five or six inappropriate and offensive things before I finish this little speech. If you have listened to me talk or read my column before, you understand why. So should anyone feel offended by what I say, please do not blame me, blame Bert. He was the one that invited me to be on this podium. Um, and second of all, I have to admit that I do not work in the tourism industry, I do not write about the tourism industry, I have never heard of the term complete visitor economy. <laughs> I know very little about the tourism industry, so what I will say today is my opinion and my opinion only, and my opinion are often wrong, and you are free to express if I'm wrong. Um, the Thai culture, good or bad for the tourism industry, well, Good or bad, one thing we know for sure, that tourists would not stop coming to Thailand, no matter what we do. Now, the tourism industry may have ups, may have downs, but still, tourists come to Thailand, and a lot of them do, always, every year. Otherwise, most people in this room would not have a job. Now, MasterCard, global destination cities, I think you all know this statistic. I think earlier this year, they put Bangkok as the third most preferred destination in the world, in fact. Now, usually when we have a high ranking on something, it will be about corruption and things like that, but this time is a good thing. People love Bangkok, people love Thailand. I think a lot of that have to do with the Thai culture. Thai culture which has good aspects to it, bad aspects to it, but at the end of the day, for tourism, it is very that good, because otherwise, why would the tourists still keep coming here year after year after year after year. Now Bangkok, the third most preferred city. We're talking about a city that is, you know, so congested and polluted. It's an incredible mess of short-sightedness and poor planning. You, you, you cannot walk down a footpath without having to dodge prostitutes, ladies and lady boys, if you walk down the You have to dodge all these vendors along the street. You have to keep one eye out for robbers. That's tourism police, by the way, if you don't know. <laughs> and also, you have to keep your eyes on the ground for dog faces. These are everywhere in the streets of Bangkok, the third most preferred destination in the world. So why is it that the people still come? Because they love the Thai culture. And I'll elaborate on the Thai culture in a little bit. Uh, more bad news, you know, I, every other day I work for a newspaper, I know, there are stories about tourists getting raped, getting scammed by jet ski operators, getting robbed, this and that, happens all the time, every single week, every single month, and still, they come to Thailand, not just to Bangkok, to the islands, to Phuket, and elsewhere. And also, we charge them dual pricing, one price for the Thais, one price for tourists, and also, the foreigners who are residents of Bangkok in Thailand, and yet they still come. They don't mind all that. There must be something great and wonderful about the Thai culture that they really like. Sometimes I, I, I liken tourists to abused wives. <laughs> no matter how you mistreat them, they still keep coming back for more. Now that one example of a metaphor that might be offensive to some people, but still, it's just to illustrate that things in Thailand are not great. We're not very efficient about things, we're not very clean, we make a lot of mistakes, but still the tourists come. They come because they love the Thai culture. And I would like to compare to the world is like an American high school class. And in that class, you have many different characters. You have the jocks, those who play sports, you have the popular kids, the unpopular kids, the cheerleaders, the jerks, the Greeks, the, sorry, the geeks, the freaks, the nerds, the glee clubs, so on and so forth. Well, Thailand to me is a girl on a cheerleading squad. She's, she's not the head cheerleader, but she's on the squad. Now, this lady here, she's She's not the brightest in class, not by far, but she does make average grade. She's not bad, she's in the middle of things. Um, she cheats on her test. 
But other people also help her cheat. But she gets away with it because she's cute and popular. She's not dumb, she's got street smart. And we can also say she's quite cunning, quite clever. In fact, she's a survivor. And normally she has a sunny disposition. She smiles a lot. She's friendly. People like her. She's attractive. Most importantly, she's hot. She's gorgeous. She's very pretty. So she may gossip about you behind your back because we Thai people love to gossip. <laughs> she may spread rumors about you because we Thai people love rumors. <laughs> she may steal your boyfriends because we Thai people will charge you through pricing and you know, reach one hand into your pockets, that's what we do. But still, she gets away with it all. She's well liked, she's still popular. Because she's hot, she's gorgeous. Look at the Prime Minister. If you're pretty, you can get away with a lot of things. <laughs> that is just the way the world works. And that is part of the Thai culture. We are a beautiful country, a beautiful people that have a lot of negative aspects and skeletons in the closet. And yet, people still love us. We're hot, we're fine, we're gorgeous. And most importantly, she never say no to a date. Again, with Thai people, we don't say no. We say yes all the time, even when we know. It gives you confidence, it makes you like us. Now, our tropical green forest may be diminishing. <coughs> we slash and we burnt, but still what we have left is still quite beautiful and quite lush. This girl, her beach may be trampled upon many times over, but still the sandy stretch is quite beautiful and the tourists will still love to come and play on her beach and swim in her sea. Most important of all, she's a fine, beautiful lady, a five-star luxury, and an affordable price. <coughs> you don't have to pay much for her. She's not an expensive date. So tourists love Thailand. There's nothing in the world that is entirely good, nothing that is entirely bad. But at the end of it all, people love Thailand because we make tourists feel safe, feel at ease, feel at home. They feel welcome. They feel safe, even if in reality they're not actually safe. Give them <coughs> feels. They feel welcome, even if in actuality we don't always welcome them. But they feel welcome. Because we have a culture that is nice, smiley, generous, helpful, so on and so forth. When I was in Germany, <clears throat> I was refused service at a restaurant. When I was in France, nobody would help me with directions. Now maybe to the former, I look like a Turk, and to the latter, I look like Moroccan. I don't know, but that's another issue. But in Thailand, it's very normal, walking down the street in the Siam area, for example, to see tourists with their big map out, and some Thai person, not a scam artist, just ordinary citizen, helping, pointing to direction, explaining. In the end, the tourists will get lost anyway because of the language barrier, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> we smile and we help. We are welcoming. I do Muay Thai as a hobby, and in my Muay Thai gym, it's a very hole in the wall, very Isan gym. Last month, a couple of Germans walk in, wanting to do Muay Thai. It's their first time in Thailand. They walk in and they ask me, I was the only one that spoke English in the camp. They ask me, why, 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 everywhere we go, they are always smiling and laughing at us. Are they laughing at us or are they laughing with us? I said, they are laughing at you. <laughs> but it's not a bad thing. They see foreigners, strange looking folks, big muscular guy like you, they smile and they laugh. It's a friendly thing, it's a welcoming thing. And then they told me, well, in Germany, if you smile and laugh at people, they'll beat you up. Well, you're not in Germany anymore. No offense to any Germans or Europeans here. <laughs> Every culture has things that are good, things that are bad. But in a Thai culture, we are friendly. And by the end of the boxing session, we all became Facebook friends. And the Germans adopted the why. You know, this all the tourists and everybody do the why like the Thai do. And smile like the Thai do. And after I explained that to them, they no longer, they were no longer confused about why people smile and laugh at them. It's just because we're nice people. It's a welcoming thing. You know? <clears throat> In Thailand, it doesn't matter what is the skin of your color, what's your race, creed, breed, religion. We'll take your business, we will welcome you. And then we'll gossip behind your back about how big, dark, or hairy you are. But it doesn't matter. In front of you, we are welcoming. And you cannot say the same 
for a lot of countries in this world. You cannot say the same for a lot of countries in this world. So is Thai culture good for tourism? Sure, I say it's good for tourism. Not all the aspects of Thai culture, but the very core of the Thai culture that we have done so well in, that is just being open and friendly, even while we're cheating you. <laughs> Illusion is everything. It's the power of persuasion. But the thing is, you know, raping, robbing, cheating, door pricing, scamming, you think about it, it's not only Thai culture, it's the culture of everywhere, especially in the developing world. The have-nots have this Robin Hood perspective that it is a God-given right and duty to rob the people who have money. And that's just the way it is. It's not a Thai thing. It's just a people thing. But the nice, friendly, welcoming arms, helping, being helpful, so on and so forth, I'm not saying Thailand is the only place that offer that, but Thailand is one of the few places that give you that. And we make you feel at ease and at home, and that is something that I don't think anyone in this room should ever forget when you talk good things about the Thai culture and tourism here. Now, <clears throat> there are two types of tourists that we do not like. The first type is big group of people from mainland China. I'll let you think about that for a few seconds. But it's still okay. Thai people like to complain a lot about big groups of tourists from mainland China because we find them loud and annoying. But that, again, is generally harmless. It's okay. You're still welcome. We'll still take your money. Another group of tourists that we do not like are sex tourists. but still will take your money. So it goes back to what I said earlier. There are good aspects of a culture, and there are bad aspects of a culture. And the line must be found somewhere, a balance must be found somewhere. Because all these things, the bad things I talk about, the scamming, the robbing, the whatnot, and also the sex tourism, they do taint the image of the country. And image is also very important. And let's not be hypocrites. Sex tourism, no matter how big it is, is very, very small when compared to domestic sex business. But all this play a part, all this affect who we are. We want to take your money, but we shouldn't let the world have such a bad image of us. But it's not the world's fault to have a bad image of us. It's our own fault for doing things that project this image out. The Thai culture, is good for tourism. The aspects that are good, we should foster, we should nurture, we should try and do more of them. The parts that are not so good, rather than large, fancy campaigns, lying about those not really us, actually try to change it. But at the end of it, no matter what, good or bad, the tourist will still come because we are unique, we are special, we are beautiful, we are gorgeous, we are friendly, we are teasing, seductive, inviting, alluring, and all that. And we can be have at an affordable price. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, Sawadikap, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, one of the advantages of having somebody from the outside the industry come in and say offensive things is that he can walk free yeah. and never be held accountable uh, or pay the price like I have done uh, over the last couple of years. I was even arrested at one stage, uh, so I've been down that path pretty well. So uh, congratulations to you for saying a lot of offensive, unpleasant things, which I would have otherwise loved, loved to say at the uh, dear risk of my life. <laughs> so, um, this topic, ladies and gentlemen, is beyond debate because the word culture defies definition. What exactly is Thai culture? The Hmong culture of North Thailand? The Islamic culture of South Thailand? The Khmer civilizations of Northeast Thailand? the Thai Chinese culture, the Thai Indian culture, 
or all of the above. If you cannot precisely define it, it cannot be measured, nor can it be evaluated. It can, however, be studied and discussed, and today is an important first step. In fact, this event reflects an important change in the very culture of Partha, which I have played a major role in facilitating. When I debated Martin Craig's at the first such debate held at a senior Partha forum, dubbed the Thriller in Manila, he won the battle, but I won the war. I have long advocated culture of free and open debate in this industry, and for equal space to be given to its NGO watchdog groups and critics, like Kunorana here. Mr. Craig's was the first to action this idea, and now Quinn Burt has advanced it. As it gains traction, free and open debate will change the long-standing culture of industry conferences and create a pro and con check and balance mechanism that will prove very healthy and constructive in future. The most important win-win outcome of this debate will be to encourage further debate. It is indeed a very valid subject especially in view of the winds of change blowing through Thailand, ASEAN, and Asia at large. But I will not belittle its significance by attempting a value judgment in 10 minutes. I can, however, leave you with a series of questions to ponder. And I repeat, I can, however, leave you with a series of questions to ponder. Culture is like an ecosystem a usually harmonious and sometimes predatory rainforest of trees, vegetations, wildlife, birds, marine life. Culture and nature are the two, two legs on which the entire travel and tourism industry stands. All countries take great pride in their cultures, both internally and as an export. The Alliance Française, the British Council, Goethe Institute were all set up to do just that. Today, both India and China are following suit as Indian cultural centers and Confucius institutes are expanded worldwide. Cultures have been changing since time immemorial. Just look at the way we dress, eat, and talk. Sanskrit and Latin are no longer spoken as widely as they once were. In many parts of Asia, we still enjoy using our hands to eat. In the West, this is considered uncivilized. Indeed, all forms of communication and travel lead to changes in culture, for better and for worse. The internet and the tourism industry are all drivers of, are both drivers of change. So are education and migration. We in the travel and tourism industry advertise culture and nature as saleable assets. The value we attribute to it, however, is directly related to the amount of money we make out of it. Indeed, here is my first question for further debate. Are we an industry of ingrates? If we take cultural assets given to us free by past generations and mother nature and profit from selling them, do we do enough to protect and preserve them? Here are five questions on the link between Thai culture and Thai travel and tourism. You decide, you decide which one is good and bad, or bad. Are the Thais as happy, easygoing, smiling, friendly people as they used to be? That's question number one. Question number two. How did the delicate and gracious cooling off tradition of Songkran change from the sprinkling of a few light drops to an orgy of hose pipes, buckets, and water guns. Question number three. Is Thai culinary culture losing its Thainess due to its growing popularity? Four. Tourists crave authentic experiences. But what exactly is an authentic experience? Number five. Buddhism, an exemplary way of life, is advertised as being intrinsic to Thai culture. Do visitors have good reason to be confused when they see some very un-Buddhist characteristics, such as nightlife and alcohol, that are also widely 
but erroneously considered to be a part of our culture. There are, however, many aspects of Thai society and traditions that visitors admire. Respect for guests, teachers and elders, reverence for His Majesty the King and the Royal Family, the daily 6 p.m. national anthem, I'm sure, respect for the flag, the general politeness and grace of the people. With the sole exception of Bhutan, I know a few other countries where such traditions still exist. But will they last the test of time? Global economies and societies are changing rapidly. One indicator is the increasing number of shopping malls with their omnipresent brand names and icons of globalization. I call it clonalization, the culture of sameness. You can stand in the middle of Siam Square today and you will not know which city you are in. Let me broaden the scope of this very thought-provoking topic and take you beyond Thailand to ASEAN and Asia. You all know about an ASEAN economic community, but how many of you know about an equally important document called the ASEAN Socio-Cultural Bl Blueprint that is designed to promote ASEAN cultural integration and an ASEAN identity? How can the people of ASEAN integrate if we know nothing, next to nothing, about our culture, about our culture, history, and heritage? For example, our cuisine is an intrinsic part of our culture. Thai restaurants abound throughout ASEAN. But here in Bangkok, one is hard-pressed to find a good choice of Malaysian, Indonesian, Filipino, Burmese, Vietnamese restaurants. Why? In the post-2015 integration period, more than half of the 600 million of people of ASEAN will be Muslims. What do we know or understand about Islamic culture? Some of the best coffee in the world is grown in Laos, Northern Thailand, and Vietnam. But the global coffee culture is dominated by Starbucks. Why is it not possible to create an ASEAN coffee brand and give the big boys a run for their money, like AirAsia did. How many hoteliers serve Hill Tribes coffee in your restaurants and rooms? And one final important question beyond ASEAN of relevance to the emerging Asian century. Asia's best travel and tourism asset is its cultural, social, religious, ethnic diversity. But this asset is also dangerously and potentially its biggest geopolitical liability. If environmental issues are leading to climate change and global warming, cultural clashes will lead to regime change and what I call the other global warming. What can the Asia Pacific travel and tourism industry do to prevent this from happening? History has shown that the best most stable, progressive, and peaceful societies are those which allow multiculturalism to flourish in a way that unleashes the best of human creativity and harness its power to do good. The Mughal emperor in India, Akbar, is an example of this. New York is widely known as one of the most culturally vibrant places in the world. Bangkok, I think, is actually heading in that direction. Walk through any Thai tourist spot around Christmas, New Year time, and the babble of languages you hear is just mind-boggling. Let me end with two examples of how integrated cultures can produce some wonderful blends. Thailand's most famous textile is silk. And yet, the best-known Thai silk products bear the brand name of a missing American named Jim Thompson. One of my best friends in this wonderful industry was the late Roberto Jyoti Kasathian, the hybrid son of an Italian mother and an aristocratic Thai diplomatic father. One of the most decent, honest, sincere, and dedicated people I have ever known. May God rest his soul in peace. As I said at the beginning, to offer a good or bad value judgment in 10 minutes would be, to, would be to belittle a very valid and serious issue. 
The best way to address the deeply complex role of culture in evolving societies and prevailing winds of change is to encourage further debate. In fact, every Bata chapter should create a regular forum to debate whatever issues they see fit. And that includes discussing them with speakers who can say things in an offensive, unpleasant way. One topic I can offer you right now is medical tourism driving up health costs for the ordinary people? Think about it. My warmest personal thanks to all of you for coming here today and to convert for advancing this culture of debate. As they would say in Sanskrit, Satyamev Jayate, which basically means truth always triumphs. Thank you very much. Good, let's have a few minutes of question time. And you don't have to answer MTS five questions or return his question with that <coughs> other question. But I think that both Kunvor and I and Kun MTS have served you quite a lot of food for thought. And I think we should really take a few minutes to think about it. And if you have any questions at this moment, please feel free, take this opportunity to hear and listen to two people that speak out of their mind and out of their heart at the same time. Question. I love it in Thailand. Question, no question, thank you very much. <laughs> That's not the way we would like to do it. Rick, please, you come from farthest, so you're allowed at least two questions. <laughs> well, I only have one. I begin with a compliment. This is a a great debate. I'm not sure you disagreed, though, enough. You probably both said in various ways very similar things. So that's that's constructive and, and perhaps positive. But if the culture of, of Thailand is basically good and an asset, what I guess you're saying, though neither of you use this word, is that the reputation of Thailand is good in the eyes of prospective visitors. And any reputation is always at risk. And it would be interesting to hear each of you talk a little bit about what is being done or maybe should be done to, to mitigate the risks that Thailand could lose the reputation it has of a very good, vibrant, and strong culture. To lose it through dilution, to lose it through taking it for granted and thinking it will always, like the cheerleader, even the fairest rose will fade. They don't all drop three prime ministers and stay cute. And one needs to think about a risk evaluation. So the question is, after those comments, to each of you, what is being done or could be done or should be done to manage the reputation of Thailand, a reputation that, like any country, is always at risk? <laughs> <laughs> I'm having dinner with him, so you know, we'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, in my personal opinion, around the world, for those who follow what's going on in Thailand and follow Thailand cost closely, we have already lost the reputation. For the casual people around the world, they probably still believe in that reputation. If the reputation is Thailand being a nice, wholesome country with a strong cultural <coughs> heritage and history. Uh, but to me, I don't think it's a bad thing that we are losing the old of reputation as long as we are building another reputation reflecting a culture that has evolved or is evolving for the better. 10 years ago or 15 years ago, I walked the street of Bangkok and the only foreigners I see would be elderly white men. That's it. Today, I can't go anywhere without bumping into people of all ages from everywhere around the world. I'm young kid, I still party. I go to Tonglo, I go to RC, I go to Kaosan. Europeans there, Americans there, Korean, Chinese, Japanese, Thai people, we all dance together, we all party together, we all gathering together, we all build together. The OG that is a Songkran festival, to some of us, we look at it, it's like, oh my god, what's this? It's a zoo. But still, I look at it from another perspective. Young people from all over the world, laughing, happy, throwing water at each other, 
it may be a bit tasteless to the older generation. But to us, it's just fun. It's like the marriage of Western wet t-shirt contest <laughs> and Thai tradition come together in this melting pot of global wetness. <laughs> You can make a positive spin about everything. So uh, that the reputation of what Thailand was in the 80s, 70s, 60s, to me personally, forget it. You can't keep that. The world changes. But what we are becoming, what we will become, that's what's important and how to shape and mold that which we are today and will be in the future. And that is what I think is the most important. Rick, I'm going to uh, continue this uh, train of thought on offensive, unpleasant remarks, and this is a golden opportunity to actually do it because I'm a good company here. And as he said, you can just blame Bert for everything. Uh, so this is my cue. <laughs> I always believed that uh, the Thai tourism industry is a marketing genius and a management dunce marketing genius and a management dance. And the result of that marketing, overwhelming marketing power really is that you're getting 22 million visitors coming here. Uh, obviously there's going to be some wear and tear on everything. Uh, today people will tell you 22 million people come to this country, but they will not tell you how much water they consume, what happens to all the garbage that they produce how much damage is done to the coral reefs. Uh, it's an industry that is also very good at sweeping things under the carpet. Um, one of the, you talk of crisis these days. Um, the first case, the best story I've ever covered in this industry was the outbreak of the AIDS crisis in 1981-82, when the first case of AIDS in this country was discovered. Uh, and at that time, the initial reaction of the travel and tourism industry was to sweep the whole thing under the carpet because it would affect the travel and tourism industry. And there was a guy named Michai, Michai Virat Bhaitia, who is a Max Isay award winner and one of Thailand's most famous plan, family planning people, who actually got up and who he became a tourism minister later on. Uh, he actually got up, he was invited to speak at one of the travel agents' functions, and he said, look, he said, uh, and this was just as he was, he was a, a, a tourism minister at the time. He said, look, he said, I'm telling you, travel agents, that if you send your people here for the wrong reason, tell them not to come. If you tell, if you send, going to send your people here for the wrong reason, tell them not to come because they will die. Very simple. Uh, of course, the travel and tourism industry were just aghast that how could somebody at that stage say that. But this man basically saved the travel and tourism industry because he was quite public in saying so, that if you don't start doing something about this problem now, it's going to become a pandemic of, of gargantuan proportions and you won't have a travel and tourism industry to sell in two years. Now, this is the kind of honesty, transparency, offensive remarks that you need in this business. Specifically on the issue of culture and other things, well, you know, you're getting that, that balance, that this equilibrium between quantity and quality, you're seeing such a huge growth of numbers that the ability of the infrastructure, the environment and other things is beginning to sag. And that always takes time to catch up. And that's what I mean when I say marketing genius and management does. The Thai tourism industry is not going to go wrong. you got, you got some of the most biggest population, populous cities within a three to four hour radius of flying time. And you've got AirAsia and you've got low fares, and you've got visa-free facilities, you're not going to go wrong. This, you can shut down most of the travel associations tomorrow, and people will still come to this country. People will still come. It's great value for money, it's good fun, everything works fine. And, but who is, at the end of the day, going to take care of all the other issues that are emerging? Uh, tomorrow, or today, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Foreign Correspondents Club, uh, there's a group of NGOs that are holding a huge a press conference to protest against uh, a, a, a group of 
and endangered animals, which they believe are being imported by one of the local wildlife safari parks, to which people send their tourists. Now, does the tourism industry have a view on this? Which side are they going to take? You tell me. Are they going to? If that safari park is a member of Pata, you think Pata is going to say against anything against the safari park? No way. But it's worthy of debate. And that's the kind of issues that are now beginning to emerge as this delicate <coughs> balance between the two sides begins to fall a little bit out of some sink and the numbers just keep moving. One more question. Yeah, first and foremost, I think you've been all given Two a... more questions. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Ben. Yeah, you can go first. Ben, would you like to go first? No, I'll go after you. Um, first and foremost, I think we've all been treated to an extremely uh, uh, honest and uh, eloquent explanation of the headaches and challenges that we all know in reality we have to face. And fair enough, Imtiaz has put me on the spot at the end, uh, as he often does, and says, whose side are we on? Whose side is Pader on? We would like to think we're always on the, the side of balance and sustainability with business building. It's a very imperfect science and it's a very difficult path to find. But I entirely agree with you, as evidence what you said at the beginning, that if we're not honest enough amongst ourselves to have these debates, then we are not doing a good job. So I commend Bert for taking this on and I'm not going to try and analyze all the very colorful things you both said. I think uh, Thailand looks better than an average cheerleader. I think she looks like a very healthy and welcoming girl who a lot of people would like to ask to dance with. Whatever happens after that is up to your imagination. But uh, can I uh, finish by saying we at Padder in headquarters will certainly encourage the the spirit of open discussion and debate, but that, is, that requires everyone to participate and not be selective in their quotes after the event. Thank you, Bert. Okay, hey Bert, just a question. What has transpired? Might it at some point not be advisable to have a sequence that reverses today's topic of saying, is the tourism industry or the complete visitor economy good for the Thai culture? How about that? Good. Next chapter meeting. Ben, you have the last question. Yeah, my house is pounding because personally, I hate to be a sheep dad. Okay. Yes, I fight all the way, you know, but I have to accept it that yes, we are a sheep date here. What is the way forward in your eyes, outsider, and in your eyes, someone who become an insider in Thailand? What is our way forward to please have Thailand stay away from being a sheep date? Thank you. I've never thought you were thinking. See, when, I, when, I, when a Thai lady stands up and says something like that, it makes me proud that my mother is a Thai. And how, how can we, what can we do to not be a cheap date? Is to be more like this. First of all, refuse to be it. I believe as Simitas was taking the example of Kunmi Chai saying, sometimes we just have to say no. Like my portion of the speech where I ended with, we hate sex tourists, we still take your money. Why? We have to say no. Sometimes we just have to say no. It's all about personal integrity and character and who we are. Not just as persons, but as a culture and as a nation. We just have to say no. But individual citizens, we can say no easily. But to say no as a nation, it requires a national effort. It requires government to step in and help. How do we close down and shut down all these sex tourist operators and operations? How? Well, I think that's why there are associations like Pata. 
and the powers in your hand to negotiate, to harangue, to demand, and to put pressure. What I do is I write. Unfortunately, I don't think many people in the government can read in English very well, so... <laughs> what I can do is limited. <laughs> but I say each of us can, have, can do things in our own way. Because, right, Thailand should not be a cheap date. We should be the most expensive state there is in the world. In fact, we should be priceless. Nothing can buy us. But that's the dream, and it's up to us to make it reality. The best thing that I think Thai tourism industry can do is to make His Majesty the King's sufficiency economy the underpinning driver of everything the industry does. Just take the principles of the King's sufficiency economy. It is probably the most balanced economic, social, environmental system along with gross national happiness of Bhutan today. The industry today, the Thai travel and tourism industry, owes literally everything, the marketing genius that I mentioned, to the fact that the most, the biggest events in the Thai tourism industry, starting from 1987, visit Thailand year, which marked the 60th, uh, fifth cycle birthday of the king, to 1999, when they marked the, the 72nd birthday and the sixth cycle, and now with the eighth cycle, all these major events have been, which have unleashed budgets, brought the industry unity together, have been based around royal events, specifically the King's birthday. And I ask the travel and tourism industry that what legacy are we in the industry leaving behind to a man who has led the country with all the, the probably the last great leader of the twin of this generation who has left us with this wonderful thing this wonderful philosophy pretty much along the lines of what Mahatma Gandhi did in my country but as Mahatma Gandhi used to say in my country people are very fond of garlanding my portrait but they will not listen to what I say well now we hear of this thing called creative economy Excuse me, what is a creative economy? What could be more creative than a sufficiency economy? I mentioned the coffee. I don't understand today, it's Hill, it's Hill Tribe's coffee. It will make a huge contribution to poverty alleviation. It's sustainable, a lot of it is organically grown. It creates local jobs. Yet, you hardly see this, in the, this being discussed, the sufficiency economy, anywhere in the travel and tourism industry. Just not done. And I cannot understand why this has not become mainstream talk. It's all there. It's all there. We fly in a lot of foreign consultants come and tell us how to do things, but maybe the foreign consultants need to read up on this, you know, and then you'll have the definition of people who come in and ask you for the watch and then tell you the time. So I think it's already there. I mean, we, we just, in a way, you know, <laughs> if something comes from abroad, we sort of think, oh, this has to be better. It's actually the other way around. People are coming to this part of the world to learn about yoga and Ayurveda and all our local traditions. Then they go back and re-export it back to us and package nicely. And we begin to think, wow, this must be really something. It's all here. We just need to reach into our own roots and appreciate what we really have. Okay. Let's see. I can't say no to you. Yeah, well, I just want to say something to Ben. Don't be offended by cheap day doesn't have to be a negative meaning. Forget about sex tourism, we have that in all the countries. The good meaning of cheap date is that Thailand is a very attractively priced destination. Compare us to Hong Kong or Singapore. We sell ourselves at half the price, but this is why lots of people come here. Uh, if we were the price of Hong Kong, we would have half the tourists coming here. So. If you look at it overall, being not cheap, but being well-priced, attractively priced is good. Yeah, if well attractively priced, I think I can accept that. But right now, at the moment, I think we are just about... Okay, let's I go on a date. I think there's another situation in our idea. I'll invite you for a date and we can discuss this further. <laughs> one more question. Uh, 
I'm a newest member of the Thought chapter here. I got a member about three, one and a half hours back. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I've been with the Fata in India. I own a travel company here in Thailand. That's the reason I wanted to interact with you guys. A uh, lot of thought-provoking discussion. Uh, sir, I heard your part of it. I have a small question for Fata. You know, we have been speaking about the cultural part of it and how to promote and how to bridge the gap between the Thai culture. The King's birthday is a great event. Why wasn't Pata to promote it? If you see, in UK, 18 million people came in to see the marriage of the prince. Uh, a few days back, when the US president was elected, 7.5 million additional tourists came. They didn't go anywhere near the White House or anywhere, but they came in. A lot of things were there. A lot of commemoration was done. A lot of gifts were made, and the industry was booming. And the travel authorities of UK, travel authorities of US, did wonderfully market this event. I think to bring up the culture of Thailand, uh, even like the King's birthday, which is fantastic, as we just his birthday is a fantastic thing, we could have all, as a tourist promoters, could have done something and got in around this region something. I mean, I think Pata should look into that, and that's my humble submission to all of you. Thank you. And yes, we will look into that. And we have had debates on that already with the TAT. Uh, but it would take half an hour to explain, so please forgive me. We can meet afterwards, and I'll go there. The fact that you are all still here and is the biggest compliment to our two speakers. They're here. Because normally by this time, the empty. You're still here, all of you. So I'd like to say thank you to four people in this room. Not only to Dusto, gentlemen, but I'd like to say thank you to MTS parents who are in the back of the room. Thank you for producing the son you did produce. <laughs> pain in the well-known place, <laughs> but sometimes we need a kick in the back, because that helps us all coming down to earth, and I hope you did that with him, as he is now doing that with us, so once again, thank you very much for being here also today, and thank you. Of course, thank you, I have to go to the two speakers, and if Gizzi, if you would do me the honor and present these two gifts to the keys, to the speakers, then I don't have to climb on the ladder. Kunvor and I thank you very much for taking the time and being here. Thank you. And I hope that this little gift will help you. To, to keep track of all the things you have said and you are doing. And thank you very much to you, MTS also. As always, it's a great pleasure. Last but not least, can I have a vote of this room? Is Thai culture good or bad in a big picture point of view for tourism in our industry? CVE, VVC, CV, VC, whatever. Okay, good or bad? Very good. Very good. I think the bottom line is, yes, we have challenges, but we will overcome the challenges. Thank you very much for being here today. And please take these thoughts forward into your organizations too. And then the more people get involved, the better it will be for the future. And I look forward to seeing you at this next debate, where we will debate the other way around, as Alwyn suggested to us. Thank you, have a good day, and once again, thank you for investing overtime in Pata. Sawadee kap and kap